What's up, everyone? And welcome to UVIC's ev first ever Facebook Live. We're here to answer your questions. So whatever you've got, send them your, our way and we'll be able to answer them. I'm Kevin, a fifth year microbiology student coming at you from Vancouver, BC. My name's Isabel. I'm a linguistics student. I'm in my final year and I'm originally from Calgary, Alberta. My name is Abdul. I'm from Libya and I just graduated from a five year engineering program. I'm Rebecca, I'm from San Diego, California, and I'm a gender studies major and Spanish minor, and this is my third year at UVic. And my name is Peter, I'm in my last year in chemistry, and I was born and raised here in Victoria, BC. All right, now that we've met everybody, our questions are already coming in, and so the first question we have, you guys ready? Yeah. Are you sure, are you positive? Okay, okay. this is a big one, it's a tough one. Okay. So the question is, why did you originally apply to UVic? Who wants to go first? It's a tough one. Okay, all right, go for it. Well, I'm actually a dual citizen, so I am an American citizen and a Canadian citizen. So I always sort of had Canada in the back of my mind. It's a really beautiful place, and I decided to come up here, take a tour of UVic, and it sounds a little cliche, but it just started clicking for me. I really, the nature, it's so beautiful here, but I also really love the size of campus. We're sort of mid size, so it's big enough so you feel like you're really on that campus vibe, but it's also small enough so you still see familiar faces from your classes, from your residents, so you don't feel like too too small in that new big experience, new big place you're living in. So I really liked that comfortable feeling. Nice. I like it, Rebecca. That sounds like it's a, it was a good choice. All right. Uh, Peter, do you want to go next? Sure. Yeah. All right. So growing up in Victoria, I just love the city too much. There's a good balance of nature. There's plenty of hikes. You can go just a little ways out of town. And it's enough city for you to have a good uh, restaurant experience and a good uh, tourist experience, too. Nice. Right on. Isabel, you want to handle it? Yeah. So I actually originally started at another university. I'm a transfer student. And I was finding that the program that I wanted to do was I was hearing great things about the program at UVic. And uh, I'm from Calgary, where it's a bit too cold for me. So the weather really attracted me to Victoria as well. Oh, yeah? Do you want to go? Are you sure? You want to go? You're positive? He's like, give it to me. OK, here you go. All right, so I have two reasons here for myself. Uh, first, I'm from Libya, so I'm a little used to warm weathers. <laughs> and uh, if you don't know, Victoria and BC in general is one of the warmest provinces in Canada. And the other reason is uh, UVic is on an island. So that intrigued me a little, so I wanted to go here and live the island life. Nice. <laughs> the island life. I like it. I like it. OK. All right, folks, so, so we got some more questions coming in. Um, next up. We've got a question about the co-op program. Who's done co-op here? Oh, we got some co-ops. All right, cool. So the question is, are any of you in the co-op program? If so, how did you find the course load while taking part in the program? Anyone want to take a stab at it first? Yeah. It's actually a different, you're not studying and doing co-op at the same time. You're actually going to take a semester off and do co-op, even do a four-month uh, four co-op. Um, or you can do up to eight months or a year. So you can study during, during the time at, in your courses, and then when you're on co-op, you're just working. Right on, thank you. Maybe we can take one more co-op question. Maybe Rebecca, you can field in your experience. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're really just working while you're on co-op. I work for the university, actually, for my co-op. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, and I'm personally doing the eight months, so I am typically actually adding on sort of a year to my experience, but don't worry, I talked my mom into it, so adding a year is no big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, you really get some pretty fantastic work experience. I like to call it getting to test drive your career, uh, test drive your passion as an undergraduate student, so you really get to figure out if what you think you really want to do is what you really want to do uh, while getting paid while building networks and if it is what you want to do then fantastic you have all those benefits but if it's maybe you know not quite what you were hoping for well you still got all that work experience you can talk about and now you get the chance to go back as an undergrad and switch it up and find what you're really passionate about so I think it's a pretty valuable opportunity if you get the chance I highly recommend you look into it. All right, well, future students, you, you heard that here first, yeah? Yeah? All right. Uh, we got a question from Pollock, um, and I'll take, uh, maybe we'll go back to Peter for this one. Um, 
Peter Pollock wants to know, how is the science program here at UVic? How is the science program? I really enjoyed my time here. I, um, yeah, like from the profs to the uh, study environment to the actual course load, I enjoyed all of it. Um, in your first year, you'll have a wide breadth of courses. You'll do your physics, chemistry, uh, math, and chemistry, and then an extra and an elective, and you kind of figure out from there what specialization you want to go to. Do you want to go physics, chemistry, and so on. Um, the profs are super nice. They, when I was in first year, I talked to the chair of the chemistry department just to talk about my my mark, and he was super down to chat with me for 40 minutes about anything. So, super awesome profs, awesome courses. Groovy, right on. Okay, so uh, this question, I'm going to turn to Isabel here. And so, Isabel, Catherine wants to know, um, is it difficult to switch faculties? Oh, Catherine, that's a really good question. I actually did switch faculties from my original <laughs> place. <laughs> um, if you have the marks necessary for the new department that you're going into, I didn't have any problem at all. Um, the best thing that I would say is check out the program planning worksheet for your new program and talk to an academic advisor. They are super useful and amazing people. So when I talked to an academic advisor, she told me exactly what I would need to do to get into the new program and I was able to fulfill the prerequisites that I didn't already have from high school in university and that made the transfer so much easier. Nice, thank you. All right, Catherine, if you like that answer, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> we can't see you, but we're going to go for the thumbs up. All right, cool. So, um, all right, this next question is going to be for Abdul. And uh, Abdul, what makes the community at UVic so welcoming? Hello. Uh, well, I, I personally believe, uh, feel like I, I was able to integrate in, inside the community very well. Um, I will, uh, at UVic, when I was a student, I... I got involved in so many clubs, uh, ranging from technical clubs like UVic Rocketry, it's the satellite design uh, team, um, there's the aerospace team, there's also uh, other clubs that I like, the kayaking teams, and uh, I can't count on top of my head, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just there's a, there's a, uh, at the beginning of each semester, there's a, a day called uh, Clubs Day, where uh, uh, student clubs get to set up a booth outside the student union building, and they just present what they're about, and you could join them for free, um, and you could join as many clubs as you like, and there are meets, it's an awesome way to meet friends and people to know for the rest of your life. So yeah, that's my answer here. All right, life goals, eh? There it is, okay. So uh, we've got a couple questions from Myra and Mary here. They've got kind of the same question, and both of them want to know about the international and travel study abroad exchange programs here at UVic. Can anybody uh, take a stab at that? Yeah, I think Rebecca, you've done a couple. Yeah, you've done some. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. All right. Give her. I can okay. I can contribute a little bit there. Uh, so I haven't done it yet, but I am on track to do a study abroad term this coming fall, uh, for my Spanish minor specifically. I will be going to Spain this fall from about October to December, and it's funny because my co-op actually helped me make that happen. Uh, with my co-op, I learned budgeting and a lot of financial responsibility. You learn how to do that too in co-op. And I was actually able to save up a bunch of money to be able to fund myself, to be able to go to Spain. So I will be able to travel there and study at the same time while being in a whole different country and really just immerse myself in what I'm studying. Uh, we are partnered with dozens of universities all over the world. So you can really travel if you want to, uh, really take advantage of travel opportunities if they come up, absolutely. Right on. Thanks, Rebecca. You guys are blowing up my feed, which is great. So many great questions. Um, never had this many messages, so thanks, everyone. Um, okay, so Sierra's asking. Some of you mentioned that you're in your fifth year of studying. Um, yes, that's me. You know, we got, we got a couple of years, so I'll take this one. Um, and how long does it take to, for most students to get to their degree? So, um, Sierra, I'll, I'll kind of give you the answer that, I mean, I think these guys can attest to it. But however long you take, it's kind of up to you. If you want to do it in four, do it in four, five, five, six, seven. I know people 
people that have done it upwards of eight or nine. It's just because you can work, you can do co-op, there are tons of opportunities while you have your degree, and I think you guys can attest to that. Yeah. So, um, you know, it depends on what you want to do, and I think once you start your first year, you kind of realize, like, the options that are available, and you're like, I'm going to take a break and do this, like, travel abroad instead, and then it kind of adds some time. So, um, five years is, I think, pretty normal um, at this point, so most of us are in our fifth year, but uh, can definitely do it shorter or, um, or longer. It's up to you. All right. Okay, so uh, this question is for our international students. Um, and Nabil wants to know, um, how is the international community? So um, I'll give this one to Abdul. All right. Um, the international community. So I will speak to, uh, in, in relation to the engineering program. So there are quite a few international students out there. Um, um, there's, uh, I mean, I, what am I going to say? Um, there's the, the, there's a lot, a lot of people from all, all over the place, uh, from North Af from Africa, from Asia, and from even Europe. Uh, you can just talk to them, and there's also uh, transfer students, which are students that are, uh, c come on exchange uh, for a semester, for like that's, which is uh, like four months. Um, you get to meet them, you become friends with them, you can also like the, uh, even travel and explore the island and even BC with them. Uh, it's, it's, um, the, it's like any other place, like it's, it's, it's very easy to, uh, to meet friends and meet other people from other all over the country and the world. Um, it's, uh, it's nothing really special about it, yeah. <laughs> I know it's so normal that it's not special because there's so many people from everywhere here at UVic, which is cool. But Rebecca, I want you to also answer that because you know quite a bit about that. So can you attest to your international experience? Absolutely. I'm not too interesting. I'm just from right down south in the States. But we do have over 4,000 international students here at UVic, which is quite a few. So you will be making friends from all over the world. And if you are from another country, you'll probably meet people from your country and from Canada, from other places maybe you've never been before. Uh, living in residence is a great place to meet a lot of people, uh, especially from other countries. Anyone can really live in residence, and you'll meet people that way. There are a lot of clubs that are geared towards international students and a lot of uh, holidays that are celebrated on campus that are uh, from other countries. So you can still celebrate your culture here. You can still find your people here. You won't feel like too much out of your comfort zone, but don't be afraid to take that little first step into the new environment you're living in. You will find people you know, but you also find people from different places and places you've never been. So it's really exciting. <laughs> Go lots of Americans too. <laughs> Buy me. <laughs> I almost burped into the mic, so excuse me. <laughs> um, that would have not been good, but students burp too, okay? All right, so um, let's see. So uh, Linnea wants to know, are you able to get help from the professors? Um, and also, are there good places to get help? Um, Isabel, do you want to yeah. take this one? Oh, yeah, totally. I am a huge fan of office hours. I cannot uh, say enough amazing things about office hours. So your professors will have office hours where their door is open and you're welcome to go in and they'll often say things like, hey, if you can't make it to my office hours, just email me, let's set up an appointment to talk. And I have found that when I go to office hours with a problem, sometimes that you know we'll talk about the trouble I'm having in lecture and then it'll sort of evolve into this amazing conversation about a shared interest or something like that. Um, I also cannot say enough good things about the learning commons at the library. Have you guys been to that before. Um, math is not my strong suit, and when I had to take calculus, drop in math and stats help saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely recommend checking out the library and all the resources there, talking to your professors. They're people, you know, very, uh, you know, they're just like you. So head to office hours. If you don't go and tell them you're having trouble, they won't know. Um, so I remember being really intimidated at first, but it made so much of a difference. So do it, go to office hours. <laughs> yeah. I also would like to add, uh, just in case if you attended a class and you uh, saw the prof talking about a specific topic or research topic that you are interest personally interested in, go to his office hours and say you're interested. It might you know, spin out to be a co-op or two. I know a person who started his company because he approached <laughs> a professor awesome. and he found out that the, their two interests were aligned. And yeah, he's actually in 
uh, in Vancouver right now at a conference just presenting his idea to a bunch of investors. So yeah. Cool. <laughs> Ooh, uh, big leagues. All right. Um, all right. Next up, we've got a question from Mariana, and uh, she's asking about the arts culture um, and all that jazz with the life going on with the arts, and you know, all that jazz uh, in Victoria. Uh, do you find a lot of exciting things to do, especially you know, the culture of being a student, all that kind of stuff? Do you want to take that on? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Outside of school, well, not really outside of school, but <laughs> on campus, uh, many things you could do. You can join, as I said, clubs. Uh, I, I can't <laughs> plug this enough, but UVic Rocketry, I spend tremendous hours there. <laughs> and it's usually, this club, usually they work towards a co uh, an annual competition. Uh, that's a challenge. You solve that challenge, and whoever whoever's team, like you where you compete against other teams from other universities, and whoever does it best, you know, wins the prize. Uh, Last year we won, so <laughs> big thumbs up. You know. uh, um, other th things you could do, uh, again, there's other so social clubs. There's, uh, there is, uh, what's, as I said, the kayaking, uh, where they do, I think, every Friday they go to the pool and they jump in a kayak and you just <laughs> uh, practice until you get it right, I guess. Uh, I had <laughs> so much fun doing that. Um, what else you could do? Uh, you can go downtown, you know, with some friends, and there's also... Um, was the cafe, cafe board? What's it called? Board the uh, game board cafe. Cafe. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I like that. Uh, what else I can add? Anyone uh, yeah, has suggestions? Yeah, right. Um, I actually explore the island quite a bit with my family and friends, and whenever we come across an art gallery, we stop and we go in and check that out because there is so much amazing art happening on this island. Um, there's a ton of music happening all over the island as well and so many amazing people doing all sorts of things with the arts. Uh, really, if you open up your eyes, take a look around, it is everywhere. So it is so fun to explore all of that and do it hanging out with your friends as yeah. well because that's the best way to meet people. And the museum. Oh yeah, Peter said the museum. Um, and I think in short, Mariana, like you will never be bored with things to do. Like there's so much going on in Victoria all the time. Like we have a huge activity-based culture. So it's a matter of just getting out there, finding it, and uh, you'll find yourself a new home in some kind of different activity. All right. Um, so guys, we've got um, a lot of questions coming in about residents. Um, so we're going to start some of those um, right off the bat. First off, we've got um, uh, a very, I think, uh, intriguing question. It says, um, what are the best dorms <laughs> all right Ooh. okay so we've got a few residents uh ex-livers here so we'll start with rebecca sure i do get that question a lot and the answer is there really is no best dorm it's the people that make up the dorms that make it different year to year and every dorm is different uh in my opinion residence is a really fantastic opportunity uh not only to meet people but just to get into the community of campus uh, i will say a really good thing to keep in the back of your mind when you're looking into residence are the llc's or living and learning communities uh, these are part of residence but they're sort of themed floors and there's everything from uh, a sustainability floor health and wellness there's an engineering floor so you can also have an academic space uh, there's all kinds and you can really just sort of choose a floor that really fits sort of what you're looking for you don't have to choose an llc but if you do you can really make it easy to, for yourself to find study groups or to go on hikes with your floor all the time uh, and your community leaders who are sort of like your residence advisors they're basically student staff there to help you with any questions you have as well as plan those fun events like going on a hike or movie nights if you are on one of those themed floors your community leader will plan events a bit more to that theme as well. So yoga once a week or uh, building little catapults. I think they're the engineering floor. I heard that happen once. And then we do also have a quiet floor and a substance free floor as well. So you have a couple options. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, Alex, you kind of asked a similar question about the best residence neighborhood. So I hope that Rebecca was able to answer that for you. Um, but Anna Marie, uh, she's asking for her daughter. So we got parents on here too, guys. Yay. We're that popular. Woo! <laughs> All right, so um, she wants to know, when you move into the apartment residence uh, for extra household items, like small appliances, etc., how do you work this out with your future roommates um, if you don't know them? So we're going to go to Isabel for this one. 
Yeah, great question. Um, you, I believe you have the names of your roommates, yeah? So Facebook <laughs> and other ways of getting in touch with them are great. Um, it, I really found living with roommates, communication was key because otherwise everyone shows up with a microwave and you've got three microwaves sitting in storage for the rest of the year. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Um, so find a way to get in touch with your roommates. Remember, they're exactly the, in exactly the same position that you are. Um, and just come with a plan in place. You guys are going to rock it. <laughs> Nice. Thanks, Isabel. I'll just add to that as well. Um, when you do get your residence offers, there'll be a lot of Facebook groups that go up through the UVic community on Facebook. And so you can kind of find whatever building you're living in and then kind of post your room numbers or floor numbers. And people who are living on the same floor with you will likely be like, hey, I'm also on that floor. Hey, that is my room number. And kind of get in touch with them in that way. So that's also really nice to kind of get a hold of people. So Anne-Marie, hopefully we got that question for you. Um, okay. What else we got here? Ooh, Danny. Okay. What's living in cluster like? Um, so Danny, I lived in cluster. Um, <laughs> I loved it. It was the best. Um, and so when I lived in cluster, you fill out you know, an application. It's four roommates. Um, so me and ple three other people, which is, is cool. Like you get to meet, you know, some interesting people, I guess. But uh, everyone's like-minded. Um, you have like a fridge and oven. You can cook your own meals. The one perk about uh, living in cluster that I found was super cool was that you could cook your own meals. So you don't have to be on the meal plan. Um, and it was nice. Um, you can choose from an apartment style or you can choose from like a townhouse style. So you can have two floors. Usually there's two bathrooms, um, enough sharing space. Everyone gets their own labeled cupboards and rooms and keys to it. So you can keep everything separate, which is cool. So um, cluster was um, a great time. My roommates were three German exchange students. So I got to live with them for a full year. And uh, within Cluster, you can also meet others who live in like your community area. So that's also cool to meet people. So Cluster is a bomb. Um, but guess what, guys? What? Okay, so there is a super duper special secret coming at you guys now for the first time ever, okay? We are debuting a residence video. With all these res questions, I think it's time. Don't you guys agree? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think it is. All right, guys, so um, hey, viewers, take a peek. We got something cool coming at you right now. Hey everyone, welcome to my UVic's residence tour. Today we'll be checking out some of the housing styles here at UVic. Why don't you come on with me? Oh, I love your room. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, I really like it. It's just a perfect amount of space. I got a desk where I can do some homework, perfect room for a fridge, and then lots of storage space, so yeah. Oh, so well organized, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and then there's also tons of storage space under the bed, too. And the beds themselves are extra long? Yes, okay. extra long, lots of room. Cool, so just around the corner from my room, we have a single occupancy washroom, which is super convenient. In this corner we have a little bit of a kitchen, you can have make some popcorn, and then we have a TV, a couple couches for lounging out and hanging around. So this is a female bathroom, and last time I checked, I'm obviously not a woman, so I'm going to hand it over to community leader Matt, who's going to take you right through. Thanks a lot, Kyle. If you guys want to follow me, I'm just going to quickly show you around these bathrooms. So like Kyle said, we do have one on each floor, and they are communal, so on the first floor we have a male bathroom, as well on the next two floors we do have females, and as you can see, we have tons of space for all of our residents. You can see we have three to four sinks that they can use as well as tons of mirror space. We got some bathroom stalls over here. So it's pretty amazing to see how much space there is as well as how many people can use this bathroom at once. We have the shower area right here. So our residents here are actually all around the hallway. So this stands right in the middle. And so we can actually access this bathroom from where we came in. And we can also access it from right over here. Thank you very much, and back to you, Kyle. Awesome, thanks, Maddie. Now we're currently in a double room. This is Noel's, in fact, and we're gonna have an opportunity to interview him. Hey, Noel, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good. Has living in res helped you in your transition from living at home? Uh, yeah, I definitely couldn't imagine living off of res for my first year, just because everything's super close, food is super close, classes are close, my friends are close, so yeah, it's definitely a home for me. So this is uh, the Leadership Floors Lounge, and as you can see, it's a pretty cool space. It might be the coolest lounge on campus. Um, a lot of what's been done here was actually done by the residents in this community. So they all came together, they bought this pool table. Um, could you say they pooled their money to buy this pool table? You, you could say that. All right, now we're in the first floor of Ring Road to have a look at a laundry room. Almost every res building has its own laundry room. So, brush up on those laundry skills before you arrive. 
Yeah, we're gonna be looking at a townhouse style of living right now in Cluster. We're right here to see my friend Hannah, so let's see if she's home. Hey Kyle! Hey Hannah, how's it going? <laughs> Good, how are you? Welcome to the Granola Cluster. Thank you. So first of all, we've got our living room area here. Pretty casual, and then if you follow us right this way, this is the kitchen and the dining room area where we spend lots of time cooking. My lovely roommates here hanging out. Then if you follow me this way, I can show you the rest of the first floor. We've got lots of cupboards and storage space. Maybe if you wanna open up the pantry there. Got a good stash of food going on, perfect. And then, right this way, on the first floor, we've also got two bedrooms, Maddie's and my own. Follow me right in here if you want to take a look. So this is my room. So we've got one bathroom on the first floor, and there's another one upstairs. You can follow me that way. So we've got two more bedrooms, a second bathroom as well, and then some extra closet space. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed our residence video and you found it informative. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Facebook group, My First Year at UVic, and you can post your questions there. Now, from my home to yours, I'll see you later. Holy smokes, what a video, eh? I'm glad that we got to share that with you first. You guys were the first ever to see that. Um, also, we were the first time ourselves. I can't speak because I'm so excited. It was so cool. So, uh, residents, you guys saw an overview. If you have more questions, um, ask us, and we'll be happy to answer them um, throughout the entire session. But now we're going to move on to Abdul. Abdul, we've got some engineering questions here. Um, the first one is about um, kind of studying and life balance in engineering. And Nathan also wants to know kind of what the, the culture is around that whole major as well. So, um in terms of time management, I would say uh, the engineering program, program will, re will require a little bit more time than other programs, in my opinion. But uh, um, I say you're going to find yourself spending quite a bit of time at the engineering lab wing, which is uh, a building dedicated to the uh, engineering uh, students and their respective courses. Um, you can easily find yourself spending uh, up to 8 p.m. even during sometimes during up to like late nights 10 p.m. or something like that um, but however you'll be spending that with your friends your colleagues hopefully and uh, you'd be it's a lot of it is 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 like group projects and assignments where you can do it in a team um, and when the time comes and you're done studying the bus works until like midnight I believe right uh, I believe it's midnight, so uh, you can, uh, up to that time, you can take a, uh, take the bus home. Plus, I know that for a fact that the engineering is a 24-7 building, so you're going <laughs> to make use of that uh, uh, perk there. Uh, however, you need to get an access card from the bookstore. So for when you get here, hopefully when you get here, uh, make sure you, got the, you get that uh, card set up for you. Uh, it was just as easy as paying, I think, 15 or 10 bucks and then it will be activated the next day. Um, well, what else? Uh, what was the other question? Uh, just to follow up on that, um, Nathan also wants to know um, if professors conduct their own research when they're not teaching classes um, and if you can get involved in their research as well. So professors definitely conduct their own research. Uh, they range from uh, robotics to renewable energy to aerospace. Um, uh, yeah, if you uh, have a specific like research that you're interested in or you happen to uh, meet a prof at a class and you happen to like his uh, topic of research, then just go talk to him in, during office hours and tell him, hey, I'm interested in that. Uh, they, they usually, some professors usually like to test their uh, this, this student commitment, so they kind of like show them up at the beginning, but you know, if you're committed and dedicated, uh, they will uh, make you join in and even uh, potentially do your masters with him if you like. Uh, I know my the, uh, the reason I'm saying that is that my friend that I just mentioned earlier, uh, the first time he went to a prof, he told, do you know the it was a is a thermodynamics law. So he told him like, do you know the first law of thermodynamics? Do you know the second law of thermodynamics? <laughs> he knew none of that. He said, <laughs> okay, go back, take my course, <laughs> and then we'll talk. He did his course, and then he, he showed his dedication, his seriousness, and then the prof was really impressed, and he, I believe he did 
all of his internship of his co-op under him, under his supervision, and the prof is actually his uh, one of his board at, at his startup company that he's helping out with. Yeah, so he's helping out big time. Right, add yeah, something to that. Yeah. It is not only profs in engineering or yeah. sciences who yeah. are doing research and yeah. looking for people. Yeah. I'm in humanities and I have done research and talked a lot about research with professors in humanities, in human and social development, in social sciences. So all over campus, profs are mm -hmm. doing research, really exciting re research, and they are always happy to talk about it with students, with anybody. So definitely check it out. Cool. All right, this next question is for Peter. Uh, Peter, Quinton says that uh, he recently got admitted. Woo! Congratulations! Damn! Okay, all right, so we got that. Um, and he's wondering if uh, you have any advice or tips for newcomers uh, from a small town moving here to Victoria. So, coming from high school to UVic, none of my friends went to university. So, pretty much, I had to start with a clean slate of friends. Uh, First day of school, you go to orientation, you meet a bunch of new people. Those guys are going to be, might be your friends for life or the rest of your, um, your degree. And my biggest advice is on that is to make friends. They are the best resource you can have. They're there for emotional support. They're there for study help. And, you know, if you just want to unwind, go for a hike, go to the beach, they're great. They're just great company. So that's. Nice, thank you. Um, thanks, Quentin. If you have more questions of moving here, feel free to ask. Um, we can definitely help you out. But uh, heard it from Peter, an island native, all right? He's got that. Um, so really quick, um, Isabel, um, Josh, um, you can tell he's a Canadian. Um, maybe, I don't know, I'm guessing. But Josh wants to know, um, is there a Tim Hortons on campus? Great question, yeah. Josh. Amazing question. We do not have a Tim Hortons on campus. We have a Tim Hortons really close by. It's what, three minute bus ride. There's also a Starbucks, like a three minute bus ride away. But there are so many amazing places to get coffee on this campus. Um, we are really focused on sustainability. So we have like all recyclable cups on campus and a really awesome bring your own mug campaign as well. Uh, my favorite place to get coffee is Finnerty Express. They have amazing coffee. I stop in there probably more often than I should. <laughs> but um, I find that the coffee is a little bit different in different places on campus. So it's almost like you get to explore a whole new coffee culture. <laughs> so lots of also um, great uh, eating places on campus. So lots and lots of options for everybody. Cool. Thank you, thank you. All right, um, Rebecca, we got a couple questions about your study abroad and Spain and that whole game. Uh, so Samantha and Mike would like to know um, if you can take Spanish as an elective. Also, um, how many classes are you going to be taking um, when your study abroad happens? Great questions. If you're interested in Spanish, yes, you can absolutely take it as an elective. Uh, electives are courses that you kind of get to have a bit more creativity. Uh, you get to sort of choose them for yourself. So I recommend maybe go outside your comfort zone a little bit with electives. Uh, for example, I took African hand drumming in my first year. It doesn't have such a direct connection to my degree, but it was recommended and I'm so glad I took it. Uh, really explore those really far off interests that you never thought you could take a course in. Uh, you can do that here. And while I'm in Spain for my program, I will be taking five courses. They're sort of mixed together. So it's technically, I think, two or three. But in the end, I'll be getting credit for five courses. That's for my program specifically. Uh, it's probably different between different programs, but I'll be taking five. Cool, right on. OK, question that I think is on everyone's mind. Uh, it's going to Peter here. Um, Peter, what was it like trying to find all your classes that first few days of school? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. OK. Uh, it was rough. I, I got lost so many times. But thankfully, there's signs that point you kind of in the right direction. But I still have to ask people. It's like, hey, do you know where the LA building? Do you know where uh, the math and social sciences building is? Um, yeah, so pretty much my biggest advice would probably come try to find all your classes a day before and ask people on campus where the buildings are so you don't get flustered at like 8.20 and you have 10 minutes to get a class and you just panic and like run there out of breath, you know, like make a huge scene. So, <laughs> you know, 
try to find, uh, try to budget some time to find your classes the day before. Yeah, just like a, a little mini tip. It might sound a little nerdy, but I found it really helpful. Uh, just taking a screenshot of your course schedule. Typically, it will include the courses and where they are located on campus in that picture. So put that as your screensaver your, for your phone, at least for maybe one or two days. You don't have to show it off, but uh, it does help. So when I'm like, oh, what, what class number was that again? I can just sort of pop and be like, oh, okay, I remember now. Uh, if, also, another thing I did was I found a really nice sort of drawn out map of campus that had all like the color coding of the buildings and showed north and south because our campus is a little bit of a circular shape here so but once you got your directions in order it helps a lot so having a map having your course schedule there it can help just give you a couple little extra help moments and don't be afraid to ask uh, it people are really nice so that's what I did my first day too it's like do you know where this is <laughs> can you just point me in the right direction they're like absolutely it's right over here and really nice <laughs> nice right on so just talking about kind of first day classes finding like you know where this is and where that is uh, we got a question coming in about uh, tours does I mean such a so, uh, there's three tour guides here so I'm like which one so does UVic offer uh, tours for new students protective students current students um, Isabel, do you want to take oh, that one? Totally yeah, I do. You bet we offer tours. And me, Kevin, and Rebecca are all tour guides. Yay! <laughs> we offer tours daily at 1 p.m. every day but Sunday and major holidays. You can register for those online. We also have an amazing virtual tour. I know a lot of people are coming from really far away, and you might not have the chance to get to campus before classes actually start. But luckily, we've got this virtual tour, and it's set up kind of like Google Street view where you feels like you're actually walking through campus uh, please come register for tours we also have some awesome special events coming up where you'll be able to um, go on a tour as well so please come to tours we would be so happy to see you right on right on so uh, Noah's asking if UVic has a volleyball club um, and short and sweet Noah yes we do <laughs> all right so got a volleyball club we've got tons of other clubs we've already mentioned a few um, throughout uh, the session here but uh, once a term we have a massive clubs day um, where all of our clubs come out and kind of recruit actively for students um, and there is a club for I think like almost everything under the sun yeah like we got like a Pokemon club we got like a games club math club if we love math UVic rock tree <laughs> kayaking club a lot of clubs will kind of you know do the majority of their activities on campus but then some clubs even will go off campus for a lot of their events for example like the snow club if you like snowshoeing yeah. and snowboarding and skiing <laughs> i don't know if it's snowshoeing first but <laughs> you know <laughs> you know it's good stuff um also the surf club they uh, do an annual trip to tofino um once the reading break so that's cool you kind of go with the whole crew out there kayaking club they do um trips um almost every weekend so, so there's a lot of good stuff happening so i uh, know i definitely check out the club's day um, a vital piece of uh being a student here, all right? Um, all right, we got some questions about meal plans and food. Um, so we got Caden asking uh, what the meal plan is like here on residence. Um, and Rebecca, do you wanna go for that one? Sure. Yeah, this is a question I get a lot on my tours, because we're tour guides. Uh, so basically what meal plan is, I don't have it on me, but I'll probably grab it for you later so you can see it. Uh, every student gets a one card. That is your student ID. It's your one card for everything. It's in addition to your student ID, it's your library pass, gym pass, bus pass. And if you live in some parts of residence, you will also have your meal plan on there. Basically, it is an account on that card. Uh, it kind of has that tap feature. So if you go to a place that serves food for the meal plan, like the cafeteria near residence or Mystic Market, where we are right now, you can use your meal plan just about anywhere in there. And you just pick your food go to the till, they ring it up, and you just tap your card, and the money just comes straight out of that account, uh, and they just get a certain amount per term. And if you say, have some money left over after your first term, I usually do, it will roll over into the second term of the meal plan, and if it still has some money left over, because I like to eat pizza off campus sometimes, 50% <laughs> off on Mondays, uh, Domino's, <laughs> remember that? <laughs> uh, so if it does still have money left over, we now have a carryover account, kind of the same as a meal plan, but it'll still be there in case you're not a student anymore, so you can still use that money, so you don't have to lose it, so it's okay not to use every single 
dime any there. <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, Melissa wants to know, uh, do you recommend using a laptop to take notes during classes? So uh, let's go, Peter. How about you take this one? Sure. Um, it actually depends. In a lot of my classes, I the prof puts the notes on PowerPoint. So you print it off and they just fill in the blanks or just take notes on the side of the page. Um, I haven't used a laptop in the classes to take notes before, um, uh, but a couple of other friends in my program do. It's just based on preference. Um, do you guys have anything to add? Give her. Yeah, so when I was in my first year, I started out by taking notes on my laptop, and I actually found it really hard. I didn't know what to type. I didn't know what was important. Um, and then I found when I was just handwriting notes in a notebook that my inner perfectionist hated how messy my writing was. So I came up with a system where I take what I call scribble notes on a pad of paper. Um, and then I copy them out neatly into a notebook and that way I know I don't make spelling mistakes. I can draw my diagrams really nicely. Um, and it's also just a really great way to study your notes after class. Especially in linguistics, we use a lot of symbols that you can't always type so easily. Sometimes you have to go searching for them. Um, but I have tons of friends who use their laptops and use them really successfully. And honestly, it's a bit of trial and error for a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right on. Thank you. OK, uh, I got a question from Alex here. And he wants to know what the gym costs are like. Um, so Alex, I can help you out with that one. So uh, we have a brand new facility. It's called the Center for Athletics, Recreation, and Special Abilities, or CARSA for short. That is my home. I work there. I am there all the time. But uh, it's fun. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, most of the costs are subsidized through what we pay in our tuition. However, if you wanted to get like an additional gym membership, it does come at about $100 per semester. That rate does fluctuate from year to year. Um, but it'll be about 25 bucks a month, and you will pay by the term. So it's great. Um, it's right on campus. It's easy. It's accessible. Um, some memberships come with additional classes. Some don't. If you wanted to do extra yoga classes or, um, you know, we've got some really cool dance classes or spin classes, you can sign up for those um, on additional charges um, through the membership services desk um, at CARSA. All right. Um, cool. So that was my spiel about CARSA. But um, let's see. Oh, here's a good one. So um, we'll give this to Abdul because um, you're from a warmer place. Yeah? <laughs> OK, cool. OK. So Maddie wants to know. She says she's not from BC. Um, what is the climate like here? Um, what types of clothing should she bring? Um, she is from Manitoba, so it's a bit colder than what you're used to. But I think when you adjusted to the climate here, how did you find it? All right, uh, what was her name, sorry? Uh, it is Maddie. All right, Maddie, so uh, just a little fact here. I lived in Saskatchewan for a year, in Regina specifically, so, and <laughs> that, yeah, that, uh, the temperature get up from plus 40 during the summer, mosquitoes, lots of mosquitoes, <laughs> and then to minus 40 with wind chill, like minus 50 during the winter, and I, I like buses, they go, they go yeah, there was no buses for me <laughs> that time, so you have to walk to school and like it just, it was terrible. Uh, uh, it's a lot warmer here for sure. Um, I mean, it only snows once a year, if ever snows. Uh, we only had like, during my five year program, I only seen it snow twice. And uh, it's, I usually wear a t-shirt like this and a jacket. If it gets a little colder, it will get probably uh, plus five, something like that. I just wear a thicker jacket, so uh, you don't, worry about the uh, temperature. Um, rain, however, it does get a little wet <laughs> during the winter. So make sure you get a, like a waterproof jacket or something like that. If you're biking, make sure you, you also get the appropriate gear. gear. Um, other than that, I, I don't know. I don't have anything to add. Does anyone have anything to add here? Yeah. Is okay. it? I'm, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, where uh, there's two seasons, winter and construction. <laughs> um, rain boots. I did not own a pair of rain boots when I moved here and I quickly found get a pair of waterproof boots and a really really good umbrella. But yeah like Abdul said you know you can get away with a t-shirt and a jacket most days of the year. It's really really nice. West coast best coast am I right guys? <laughs> All right, so uh, we got a question here. Uh, this will go to Rebecca, um, and it's from Zoe. And Zoe says that she's moving to UVic from Dallas, Texas, USA. Hey. Yo, we got an American over here. Uh, and so she wants to know, is there an opportunity to ship clothing to residents before she moves in? Oh. 
Yeah. Especially all that rainproof stuff. That's something. <laughs> I actually was looking into that a little bit today. I might have to refer you for that one specifically. I know that there are opportunities to uh, have things mailed to campus before uh, your mailbox or sort of mail for living in residence is set up. I'd have to maybe refer you to resident services or maybe our team can answer that for you. Uh, but I know that is definitely a possibility to get some things mailed over here or if you have a friend over here, maybe they can hold on to it for you. But we'll find you an answer. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a resident American. She had to. She had to, right? She had to. So she had to. Um, oh, we got a little shout out coming in here. So Iman, I think that's how you say his name, says, um, hey, he misses you, and he hopes you're doing well. Oh. Yo, shout out, shout out. All right, cool. Um, Okay, uh, Kaden wants to know, is skateboarding allowed on campus? Um, interesting. Peter, do you want to take that one? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Who are you looking at, Peter? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can ride scooters, we can do bikes, we have long boards. Um, I'm pretty, pretty sure we have a skateboarding club on campus too, so uh, if you can't skateboard somewhere, campus security will be like, hey, don't skateboard there, and then you can find our new spot. Um, you can probably try. Um, but for the most part, I feel like skateboarding is pretty accepted on campus. Like, we haven't had, from what I know, too much, yeah. There's so a lot of modes of Yeah, skateboarding. there's a lot, there's a lot, so, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can't fly in. I wish some days that we could. So, but you're right. Teleportation. <laughs> that would be that would be amazing. Um, okay. So Christine wants to know: um, Would you recommend living in a cluster room first year? So, um, Christine, I lived in cluster and it was pretty good. But then again, I was a transfer student, so I came in a little bit older, um, which was nice. But um, I would say that it kind of depends. So first years typically do live in kind of the general population of our residents, which is nice. And so they kind of will meet people that way. If you live in cluster, you're still going to meet lots of people. But it just kind of depends if you want to have like a smaller group of people to live with or if you want to live, um, you know, kind of in a traditional dorm, I'd say. So depends. You can choose a meal plan or not if you want to cook for yourself. There's a lot of different options there. So, um, yeah, if you have dietary restrictions, we can't really mention that. Uh, but speaking of dietary restrictions, Ming has just hollered at us. and she wants to know, um, do we have vegan-friendly options on campus? Yeah, Isabel, you want to go for that? Yeah. Hey, Ming. Um, I was vegetarian for a while until uh, I got a little too anemic. <laughs> um, we do have a lot of vegan options on campus. Shout out to uh, one of our bloggers, Hannah. Uh, we do have an amazing blog called My Uvic Life, and Hannah just did an amazing blog post called Welcome to Vegetoria, where she talked to a lot of students who are vegetarian and vegan, and she interviewed them about their favorite vegetable. Um, so there's lots of people you're going to meet on campus. We do have a vegetarian and vegan club, and plenty of dietary options, including Village Greens, which it has amazing uh, lunch and dinner options that are vegetarian and vegan. So definitely check that out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, we've got a couple questions coming in about um, our sports teams here. And so we've got Joshua, who's playing rugby, as well as Sam, who's playing soccer. And they just want to know about how to get involved with those sports and continuing on here at the University of Victoria. And for you guys, I think the best option would be to contact the head coaches. And so if you go to GoVikesGo.com, again, that's GoVikesGo.com, you can find your sport, you can find the head coach and email them and kind of get the information to go on from there. So um, I know recruiting is happening right now so you guys better jump on that and maybe we'll be cheering you on one day from behind the stands all right so good luck with that okay um let's see palak wants to know um are you allowed to record the lecture um in a recorder during class i can take that yeah one. That's a really good question. Uh, this is going to get kind of technical, but lectures are considered intellectual property of the professors. I don't know if you guys knew that. They're kind of like copyrighted material. They belong to the professor. Uh, my best advice, ask your professor first. A lot of them, in my experience, will say yes, uh, as long as you don't share them. Um, and you know, you'll find ways if they're not al if you, your professor won't let you record. You'll find ways. Uh, talk to your friends, make friends with people in your lectures. But definitely, it's so worth it to ask your professors if you can record the lectures. Absolutely. 
Right on. Thank you for that. So, yeah, there's a bunch of different ways, as I mentioned, to record lectures, either through video or you can even use your phone as, like, a sound recorder. So some probably even post video lectures online, um, and some will post sound lectures. So just about finding that, that right group for yourself. Um, all right. We got a bunch coming in, but uh, got some questions about biking here. So uh, Thomas and Wendy both want to know about um, biking, where to store bikes, how accessible UVic is for biking. Uh, do you guys uh, have any... Words of wisdom on the whole biking community here at UVic? Because it is pretty big. Yeah. yeah. Peter, do you want to go over that one? Sure. Yeah. So a lot of people bike in Victoria. There's lots of bike lanes. So you can have your own lane away from cars. Um, places to store them. There's underground bike storage, right? Yeah. Underneath the university center. There's also tons of bike racks uh, outside the library, outside each of the buildings, too, that you can uh, store them. Um, big as a vice, though, wear waterproof clothing because it rains like eight months of the year here and so waterproof pants waterproof jacket shoes waterproof shoes like and then you'll be fine but yeah does anybody else have anything don't worry we do have quite a few sunny days too i am <laughs> <laughs> i am from california so i was a little bit worried like I'd like to get out of the constant sun, but I still want to have my sunshine. Yeah. I'd say for most of the year, you do get kind of that 50-50 feeling of, you know, when the sun comes, you're like, yes, I love it. It's beautiful. But when the rain comes, you're like, oh, well, the rain, I almost forgot about the rain. It's so lovely. I missed it. Mm -hmm. So you do appreciate all the types of weather once you get to them, so don't worry. Uh, but it is always a fantastic backup to have those waterproof items. Coming from California, I'd never heard of waterproof before. <laughs> we don't have water. Uh, <laughs> so thank you. Uh, so that is a good idea to have. And in terms of residence as well, a lot of the residences do have bike locker options. So that is something to look into if you want to live in res and also have your bike. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've got some questions here. Oh, I had it, but I lost it. Um, where did it go? Oh, man, it was such a good one, too. Um, here it is. Okay, so it's about um, on-campus jobs as well as part-time jobs while working in school. So a few different people asking about um, how to make that balance. Is it easy to get a job? Um, do you work full-time, part-time? Like, what do you guys think? Um, how's it been kind of working while in university? Anybody here work? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, Isabel. Um, there was a time when I worked full-time and did classes full-time. It was not the right balance for me. It was hard and I was tired. So uh, I actually ended up taking some time off from university and working full-time so I could save money. And um, that was a really great way for me to have the advantage of working and having the money from that but also not having to worry about the stress of school. Um, now I work part-time. I do work on campus as a tour guide. Um, my sister also went to this university, and she worked in the Student Union Building at our used bookstore and also at our movie theater. So there are a whole bunch of different jobs that you can get in totally different areas, um, and it's definitely something to look into. Do you yeah, have a... I have a so um, I'm not talking to from experience, but I have a few friends who uh, dealt with the same issue. Um, we, what, we, they, what they did is a program that's called a work study program. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, what they did is they reduced their study load to I know three courses or even two courses, which we would call technically a part-time student, and uh, they would find a position on campus uh, related to their field of study. Uh, I know a friend who did. Um, worked at uh, Canisys, which is uh, 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 it's based on CARSA and in, uh, it does a wave with the work field is they're building technology for people with disability, accessible technology, uh, like s something like a door opener or something like that. Um, so he worked there at the machine shop uh, making stuff for them. Um, he quite enjoyed it and it was quite useful for him. And uh, there's also another friend of mine who uh, worked for the Faculty of Engineering, uh, filling out survey for them and everything. And it was, he said it was quite a light load. All he, he needed to do is at his, ha at his home, uh, just an Excel sheet, work on that uh, on his own time whenever he wants, and then fill out those hours and, and get paid. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, quite a breeze. The biggest thing I want to emphasize with working while you're studying is that every single person is different and everybody's going to have the chance to find out what balance works for them. So just because it works for your friend doesn't mean it's going to work for you and that's totally okay. 
So yeah, there's a couple different routes you can go with working on campus. Uh, like the work study, you can work like work study is like kind of like 10, 20 hours maybe um, a week. And then you can do that when you're not doing classes. I know I have friends that have full course loads, but able to balance work study, depending on the hours that they offer. Um, you can also volunteer in labs, which you don't get paid, but it could be easier to get in than a paid position. Um, and there's also, you can work with professors as a co-op term and just work and not study. Um, so yeah, three, three routes, volunteering, work study, and co-ops on campus. Right on. So lots of different work options from what I hear. Um, I think getting a job is um, accessible, like you can get it for sure, but it just kind of looks like what Isabel said depends on um, how you want to do it. Like I think, you know, find that work-life balance, eh? Like kind of get that, which is uh, really key for student life um, on campus. Um, really quick, Samantha wants to know how do you join the surf club and when is clubs day? Um, Samantha, clubs day is usually the second or third week with the start of each new semester. And I join a club, we just go up, find their table and put your name and email down and they will will do the work for you. So yeah, super easy, okay? Um, all right, let's see. Um, Quentin wants to know, um, are there many basketball courts here? Rebecca, do you want to go for that one? You are the sport. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. All right, Quentin, um, I'm going to tell you one thing. We got some good basketball courts, OK? So uh, there's a really big one that we can play, and we've got tons of mini ones. Um, if you're interested in playing sports, we have um, recreational sports as well as competitive sports. Um, and so uh, whatever your kind of niche is, whatever you're looking for, um, we've definitely got accessibility here um, on campus, especially through the Center of Athletics, Recreation, and Special Abilities. All right? Um, let's see, uh, Mary wants to know, um, can I take a photography class while working towards my BSc? Peter, do you want to handle that one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, if photography is like a 100 level course and is an elective where you have all the prerequisites and you satisfy the, uh, the year standing, then for sure you can do a BSc and, um, you can do, yeah, you can do BSc and take uh, photography. You can take, yeah, pretty much an elective, any, almost any faculty, if you satisfy the requirements. It doesn't matter what um, degree you're doing. Thanks, and really quick, I'm just gonna ask Isabel here. Isabel, um, what was your favorite elective that you think that you took outside of your actual coursework? Okay, we got, we got a couple being like, ooh, ooh. Okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go Isabel first. Okay, just keep it to one. I know there's many, okay, I know. They're like, boo, okay. okay. <laughs> enabling technologies, yeah. definitely enabling technologies. It was so cool, and it, it was actually, um, Abdul talked about Canassist, yeah. and uh, that class was with the founder of Canassist, and we got to do so many cool things. Um, yeah, it was oh, with okay. Nigel, and it, you know, he, uh, it, we were, even though um, it's in the uh, Department of Human and Social Development, uh, we were doing stuff with engineers, we were doing yeah. stuff with computer scientists, we were doing stuff with nurses and educators, so it was so awesome. Right on. Okay, and Rebecca, what was your favorite? Well, I already mentioned African hand drumming, so I kind of snuck that in there. Um, but Anthropology 100 and Sociology 100, you'll probably hear those tossed around a lot. If you're maybe not quite sure what to take uh, in terms of an elective, those are pretty safe bets on being pretty amazing courses. Uh, we have a lot of extremely passionate professors about their work, and it really shows. Uh, and in those two courses, Anthropology and Sociology, you really feel their work going into what they're teaching and that they really care about every little bit and they want to know everything and they want to just teach you everything and they want you to love it as much as they love it and you probably will and those courses are just fantastic and with anthropology I would listen to my Tarzan soundtrack from Disney and <laughs> study well, about yeah, apes yeah, yeah, and yeah. marsupials yeah. and the history of humans and it was it was really cool. Nice. I think it's safe to say there's so much learning here at UVic. Like, we've got classes from time travel to Beyonce, so it's like whatever you want. Like, Batman. there's the, and Batman, like, we've got a lot. Vampire. So, Vampire, so there's tons of different yeah. classes. Um, I think whatever you kind of look for, you'll probably find in some sort of way. Um, all right, folks, so we've got a question from a few people, but Thomas wants to know, and I think this was on all of our minds when we were first in high school. Um, what is that transition like moving from high school? 
into university where class sizes get larger, um, homework assignments maybe double up, like studying gets a bit more intense. Um, who wants to start off? I think this is kind of going to be a group question. Um, maybe we'll start with Abdul. Like, what did you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm just going to speak a little bit about my first week here. I've, well, it was five years ago, so my <laughs> memory is a little bl blurry. However, I remember me standing in the orientation uh, day. Uh, it was a very long lineup. The lineup was for pizza, so <laughs> as well, it was very long. And there was a little uh, uh, guy who was very friendly. He was very chatty. He was talking to everyone, you know, just, uh, uh, you know spending time. Um, so, yeah, I got to know him very well, and I'm still with friends with him. Uh, again, like the first week is a little bit of a breeze. You just the introductory. You get uh, uh, the professor. Each prof will introduce the, the, the course, what you're going to be taught and what you're going to learn over the f course of the uh, four months. Um, and then next week comes in and then it's just like bang, like <laughs> you get bombarded with assignments, <laughs> you know, everything. But not to worry, you're on the same level as everyone. So uh, it's like looking back to it, it's not that hard. It's just that it's just a big step. And I remember in one of uh, my computer science courses, uh, which we found a a little bit tricky because I'm a mechanical. We don't really <laughs> do programming much. Um, it was uh, one of the projects and it was a little tricky. And then, like, I was really stumbled by it. And I looked to my right and to my left, and like, <laughs> like the whole row was had no clue what we we're gonna do and how we solve. So we sat together and then we just, uh, you know, took a few hours, but we. Uh, figured out and that's how actually we became friends. So I have a lot of examples how we became friends. Like it's just more of like experiencing the struggle together. Yeah. Um, the biggest piece, the best piece of advice that anyone ever gave me in my first year was don't freak out. <laughs> um, when I first started university, I was really a perfectionist and I was like, I, I got a bad mark on one of my first assignments and burst into tears. And my dad, who has more degrees than I can count, <laughs> he, um, I, I was on the phone with him and I was really upset and he said to me, Isabel, don't freak out. You've got to relax a little bit. You know, you don't have to be perfect all the time. Take it as a learning experience and do better next time. So that is the best piece of advice that my dad ever gave me. And it's the piece of advice that I give to every incoming first year. Don't freak out. We've got people here who will lend you a helping hand. Uh, counseling services is great. The learning commons in the library is great. Talk to your CL, talk to your classmates, talk to your professors and don't freak out. <laughs> Nice. Right on. I think um, the biggest thing is that UVic is such a community that you are not alone. Like, remember that? Like, we all were first years at one point, and now we're here telling you guys <laughs> about first year, right? So we made it. We were the same as you. Like, transitions, I think, are always difficult, but they're always adaptable. So never forget that if you need help, help is out there. If you need to find a friend, friends are always out there. Like, there's so many ways to kind of get that transition uh, move more smoothly. Um, and I think high schools do a great job at preparing you for that as well. Like it's a big, it's a big world here at UVic, but um, don't worry about it. Like you will adapt just like everybody else does, and everybody's are in the same shoes. I'd say one of the big differences I noticed between high school and university is the sort of amount of freedom you get. And I'll do it. I'll do it now. With great, with the freedom comes a lot of responsibility. Uh, really bad. Uh, <laughs> <Spider> <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> great power. Well, your great power is now your freedom. Uh, and it can be a little nerve wracking at times because you have to advocate for yourself and you have to keep yourself on track. So time management becomes extremely important. There's no one here that's going to tell you, okay, school from this time to this time you come home you do your homework you eat dinner you go to bed no you might have a class at 10 in the morning for an hour or so you'll have time for lunch maybe you'll go back to your dorm or library do some studying another class in the afternoon go hang out with your club or your friends and then fit more studying in there somewhere maybe but that's what it really comes down to is you have that freedom so it can be really exciting uh, but don't forget that you have to remember to make sure you're actually getting your work done. So don't get caught in, say, the Netflix trap. Yeah. <laughs> get apps to, to block those. Make sure you just go to the library, sit yourself down, and say, OK, let's get this studying, and let's learn something. And then we can reward ourselves with that episode at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah, we can sure. go here before we go back. Um, so sometimes you just got to take a step back and figure out what kind of resources are available to you. So in high school, you can take, you probably take like 
two or three um, hard academic classes and one is an elective. Here you can take, you, all your classes are kind of heavy academics. If you're, in, like for me in the sciences, I took math, chemistry, physics, uh, and biology. I just took four out of the five. And I was like, yeah, like I was panicking and I, yeah, I took a step back and said, okay, well, I can talk to profs about my problems I, or my uh, problems with the course. I can go to help centers. So there's physics, math, help centers, chemistry help centers. Um, also friends. I just like look over to the person next to me and say, hey, like, can you help me with this? Can you, do you want to meet after class? We can study together. Or yeah, like sometimes you can make a Facebook page. I remember my first year, there was uh, a chemistry Facebook page, chemistry biology Facebook page where the entire class, 300 kids were just like, Hey, like I have a problem with this. Did anybody do this question? Like, how's how are you finding this topic? And I found that really helped. Like, the community is there to help you. We just gotta find it. So that's it. Yeah, I would just like to add a pro tip here. Um, case in engineering, um, we have the ability to spread out your course load over three months instead of two months. Uh, sorry, uh, three semesters instead of uh, two semesters. So the way it works out is ideally you will start in the fall um, and then you end up in uh, end up in April. That's like two semesters. But if you really worry, telling you you don't have to, uh, you can spread it out. I know I, I, I don't remember. Did I do it? <laughs> it's a long time ago. Yeah, but I know a, friend, some, a couple of friends of mine who did it and they just, uh, this, they took a lighter load and then they decided to take those courses in the summer. And uh, by second year, you, you're gonna be end up on the same level as the other student who did uh, the two semesters instead. So um, that's, uh, yeah, in case you do engineering, that's an <laughs> option for you to do. Yeah, yeah. summer classes yeah. are the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, just follow up, like, um, as Abdul said and Isabel mentioned, like, um, anybody can spread it over three semesters. So if you're like, oh, man, I got too many courses to do between, like, spring term and winter term, you can take an extra term in the summer and do some courses in that. So that's always good. Um, our next question is, actually, we've had a couple about this. Um, but Courtney wants to know um, the differences between um, single majors and double majors. Also, um, how difficult is it to attain a double major? What would you prefer? So, um, Isabel, I think I'm going to go with you. Um, I think you've got a couple majors on your belt <laughs> all right there you go yeah so um, when you are ready to pick what you're gonna major in you, you declare it and that is your major sometimes you might want to also go with a minor so I'm majoring in linguistics and I'm minoring in health and society Rebecca's doing a minor in Spanish um, and I do have a couple of friends who are doing a double major, and that it means that you're going to have more courses. Um, most of them are spreading their degree over five or six years. Um, it gives you a lot of opportunities to explore a couple of different departments and a couple of different faculties. But again, that's totally a choice that you can make. Um, deciding what you're going to major in, if you're going to do a minor, if you're going to do a double major, those are amazing things to talk about with an academic advisor. They can really help you figure out, is this the right choice for me? Uh, do I have the resources to do this? Should I take a little more time? Should I do summer classes? Um, so yeah, definitely use those academic advisors. But there are so many options. I don't think I know anyone who did the exact same degree as anybody else because between electives and minors and double majors, there's so much to choose from. Awesome, thank you. And we've also got a couple questions here about roommates. Um, now we all know roommates, the roommate game, so um, pretty interesting. So a couple questions here about if you're able to request your roommate, if you get assigned a roommate. Um, Rebecca, do you want to kind of handle the difference between cluster double rooms, that stuff? Yeah, so in terms of requesting a roommate, you can request a roommate. So when you apply to residence, it kind of works in sort of a Facebook friend request, if I may. You have to put each other's names on your application so you sort of have to request each other there's no set guarantee it'll happen but if you've got a friend you know is going to be here and you really want to be together why not go for it uh, you don't have to request someone you don't have to know anybody here to get a roommate uh, someone will be assigned to you so you have a couple options Thanks, Rebecca. Um, all right, so Serena wants to know, this is an engineering question, um, as well as a co-op question. So what kind of support can you get for finding co-op jobs? And if you have been in the engineering co-op, how many jobs did you have to apply for before finding an actual placement? Yeah? 
Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I think I'm ready, yeah. All right. So uh, there's a really, really awesome uh, co-op office uh, at UVic, and uh, specifically for the engineering that helps you a lot with these kind of questions. They, there's actually in first year there is a, um, I forgot the name of the course, it's called Engineering 130, but the literal name is uh, not uh, across my head. But, but uh, they teach you how to write your resume, how to write your cover letter, they teach you all these things, what you're gonna do in an interview, how do you dress for an interview, all these, uh, how to look for a, a company, how do you um, sort of uh, com fill up your content skills, uh, how to uh, see what you're interested in. Um, the 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 co-op office. They also what they, their job their job literally is to go look for a, go to these companies and ask them if they wanted a co-op student. And what they do when if the company says yes, they make up a document. They list it on a website that you as a student will have access to using your Netlink ID, which is uh, uh, your email domain basically. So you will uh, access that, and there are, you gotta find like at least 100, 150 co-op postings, and some of them will list like they will require six students. And these like positions, they uh, they come from uh, the US, Canada, all over Canada, even some of them New Zealand. There are also some, um, uh, what we call, uh, come from Germany, which is part of like a, a CANU program. I don't know what it exactly stands for, but it's called CANU. It's basically they get exchange students from Germany and then we send co-op students to Germany because we cannot do exchange uh, as part of our program, fortunately. Um, so uh, it's, uh, the uh, other question is how hard to get your first co-op. So the first co-op is it gets a little bit tricky. Um, but there are lots of options. Uh, I, my first co-op, I actually went back home and did it in Libya. So uh, you could, if you're from abroad, you could do that. You have the option that. Uh, it's, it's the criteria for the first co-op is not as tough as the other ones. So uh, literally like if you had to like knock doors and uh, say, hey, do you have a position for me? And I need this, these kind of things. The co-op office will have to approve it first, but they're very lenient and they will guide you into what you should have listed in your like uh, uh, what you're gonna be doing as a, as as the work, and it it's, it should be as close uh, as technical not as technical as possible, but something as close to engineering as possible. Even if you as long as you're working within that field, they should accept it. Um, once you find your first co-op, it gets easier from there. Um, you can. Um, you can uh, you can do a lot of things to like uh, fill up your resume, I guess, to uh, make it easier for you. Like I know again, joining clubs, technical clubs, a lot of employees look for that. There's also the option to do uh, more, uh, I don't know, learn learn coding in your free time and uh, like blessing that as a as a as a skill that you have. Um, Again, like it's 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 it gets easier. I know myself. Like in order to get my co-ops, the first one I went back to Libya, and the other ones I actually uh, went. Uh, I did it at the machine shop. So basically, I went in there. I showed myself a couple a couple of times. He got familiar with me, and then he set me up for an interview, and then I got the job. Then uh, nice. next day, know. yeah, cool. so good. That's awesome. So you heard it. Uh, lots of co-op questions, lots of co-op answers there. Um, our next question is from Maddie. So she's got two. So Maddie, we haven't answered her yet. So Maddie, we're sorry, but here it comes. Uh, the first one she's asking about our sports and if you can try different sports. And Maddie, short answer is yes. Uh, we can do clubs, recreation, competitive, or you can join intramurals. Um, and so if you live in residence, your residence community leaders will make you do intramural programs. You'll go out <laughs> as like a building and battle between the buildings, which is pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Um, and Maddie also wants to know, about tutors on campus, um, can you easily get a tutor? And uh, and if you are able to tutor another student, can you find tutoring jobs? So Peter, do you want to handle that one? Sure. Yeah. So um, at least in the chemistry building, the Elliott building, um, they'll have these postings where you have the, your TA, your teacher assistants who teach the labs. They'll have extra hours where they would tutor kids, or sorry, students for uh, for 
their whatever their rate is, like 20, 30 bucks an hour. Um, you can also, on the same website that Abdul uh, mentioned, uh, on the learning emotion, uh, uh, uh that's your co-op and kind of your jobs um, uh, website to look for. You can actually post up your own tutoring schedule. You have to be pre-approved uh, for it. And yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I don't know. Good. Yeah. Okay, so anybody else have anything to add, to add for tutoring, postings, um, anything? Then we're good. Yeah, unless you want to, yeah, we're good. Sweet. So, yeah, tutoring is available, uh, free tutoring for the most part, but then we also have professional tutors on campus, so you can hire uh, for additional fees. But um, as Peter mentioned, um, lots of different options for lots of different faculties. Um, this one is for Rebecca. All right, so Rebecca, got a couple of people asking about um, the first year orientation. Um, also, Zoe, uh, our friend from Texas, she says, she says, hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all, um, and she's just wondering. So she's a dual citizen, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're a dual citizen as well. Yeah. So she wants to know as well as some others. Um, did you do the orientation? If so, what was um, first year student orientation like? Yeah. So I was a little sneaky. I went to international orientation and the regular student orientation. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can totally go to both. It's a lot of fun. Uh, international orientation, you get some, uh, sometimes it's presentations, sometimes there are performances. It's really fun. Uh, it's a bit of a smaller group. So a lot of international students do go. It's really great. And you get to automatically meet people from all over the world. Uh, but you can absolutely go to both orientations. Um, and the regular orientation, new student welcome. It's just before the first day of classes, I also met one of my friends on the first day of orientation that I'm still friends with today. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You get a big tour of campus. You kind of see where some of your classes might be, the general area. You get to uh, go into the big gym, CARSA, and you get to hear from the faculties. You hear from the Native Students Union. Uh, you hear from the Student Society and our mascot, Thunder the Vite, comes through with like t shirts and spirit packs, so it's a whole lot of fun. Uh, and you really just get to sort of get a glimpse into what student life is going to be. And there are orientation events happening all throughout the first six weeks of school. Free pancake breakfast. There'll be like a poster sale so you can decorate your room. There'll be like farmer's markets or just little local uh, trade markets and all sorts of fun stuff you can take advantage of. And of course, the, the club stays. Shout out to Latinos Sin Boderas. <laughs> Latinos Without Borders. There's a lot of international clubs as well. <laughs> right on. I think uh, just for our Americans out there, there's been a few. Can we do a group hey y'all out to our friends? Hi. Yeah? Okay, right? Okay, ready guys go? One, two, three. Hey y'all! That was nice. Right on. Um, our next question is about um, undergraduate research, and we're going to split this between Peter and Isabel. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about what undergrad research is, um, who can do it, what it is, again, how to get involved? Um, Isabel, we'll start with you. Yeah. So. A lot of my friends who ended up doing undergraduate research did an honors degree. Peter, did you do honors? So you, you'll talk a little bit about that. I chose not to do an honors degree, but I still got to do undergraduate research. I took a couple of classes. Uh, some of it was practical, hands-on research. That was my own. I had to come up with an idea and get ethics approval and conduct the study all in 13 weeks. So that was pretty... Uh, an amazing experience. And then I have also b um, done some research with a professor that was also through a class. Um, and that was great because it was really one-on-one. -on -one. We got to uh, know this topic really, really well. So even if you don't do an honors program, there are definitely opportunities to do research. And I just want to emphasize, Peter's going to talk about doing research in science, but it's not just science and engineering, humanities, social sciences, education, child and youth care, you can all do research too. So the undergrad research is a really good way to get like a base level, level set of skills that build off on your um, the lab courses that you do. And that can help you in turn get other co-ops. Um, for undergrad research, some people take first year. Some, some people have to wait until their second year to get a little bit more courses under their belt before the professor accepts them. Um, I've known people, students who have started in their summer first year. Um, and pretty much anybody can do it. I know, sorry, anybody in, who have, sorry, anybody who is in the program and has like the, like the minimum 
set of like skill set to be able to work in a lab uh, can do it. So if you do like a chem lab, you can you can uh, work in one of your professor's labs, um, and they'll train you. You won't be left to swim in the ocean. You'll you'll learn under a master student or a PhD student, or maybe under your direct directly under your prof uh, to learn the set of skills to succeed in that lab. Um, what else is there? Do you have anything to add? Do you? Great. Great. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I know again. Another friend of mine, uh, she's in microbiology, and I, I think she's a second year. And just over the summer, uh, she worked uh, for a prof uh, in a lab, and she got to go on a boat to the North Pole. So, yeah, uh, that is yeah. So, cool. so, so for yeah. for a few weeks, yeah, she she went there, and it is icy and white, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it is really cool experience. And she really enjoyed it. So, yeah, you could do if you're into that, you can. You know, get your hand wet and take a dive deep. I yeah. guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So uh, I got some bad news, guys. Um, that is times up for us. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. It's been quick. Eh? We've got a lot of awesome questions. Just want to remind everybody that if you have more questions, please post them on the My First Year at UVic Facebook page. Uh, their fellow students or experts in the field will answer them. There's a lot of different people on there. Also, um, check out the My UVic Life blog. Um, if you Google My UVic Life, there is a ton of stuff on there about what it's like being a first year to where to get the best food, to how do I pay for my education. There's a lot of different resources on there. Read through them. There's cool videos as well. Um, but from all of us, congratulations to all of those that have been accepted. Good luck to all of those that are currently waiting. And uh, we just want to say have a great night. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, and uh, we'll see you at UVic one day. Yeah. yeah. Bye, folks. Hey, see ya. Hey, y'all. Yeah. <laughs>